So a quick video of how I've been starting the car. I can't turn the key um, and get it to start. Uh, earlier, before I started recording these videos, it wouldn't turn past two. Uh, and then with a bunch of playing around with the shifter, having the car on, um, clicking, it loosened up and I can go two, three now, but they have hash marks. This is as far as it turns. I think that's probably the right amount it's supposed to turn. However, there's a temp fix that people have is uh, if they slide this down and try and start it, it actually makes up the difference and it will engage the ignition switch. Now, I've been starting the car just by putting the key in, having it on position one, and uh, starting it. But what you'll find is that right now I have the battery out for this fix that I'm going to be attempting. Now, the lock assembly I pulled from another car, and you need to have the key so that you can depress uh, this little nub. Now, this little nub is right there on the lock assembly on the cylinder and you have to have the key turned to be able to do anything with it but I couldn't do that on this one because I pulled it and I didn't actually have the key to the car so I had to hack open that channel to be able to get it out now inside it's empty right now but what you'll find is that there's this mechanism and usually it's this little piece right here that snaps and now it's springed. It has a little spring on it and it just sits in there. And when that snaps, you don't get the, uh, the nice starting. I guess that's, I think it's snapped and that's what's preventing me from turning. They say you should have your card disconnected from the battery to do this. And then once you do get started, the first place is going to be the shift interlock cable. It's these two gold bolts and then finally this black one. Uh, the two gold ones cover the plate, and the black one is what's actually holding it in place. It'll just drop down. There's another little tumbler in there that will probably also drop down. You can only go back in one way. This piece will probably fall out with it. I can only go back in one way. Just remember to put it back in. Now this is what it looks like with those two screws removed. And this last one will be the one to release the cable. Out. Um, I don't know if you need to actually remove this bottom plate. This has the um, shift locked like mechanism in there, so you can't turn the wheel. You can pop this pin out, and there's another one where there's another one on this side, I think, right where my finger is. Sorry about the angle there. This this can pop in, and then there's another one back here that can pop in, and then this will fall out. Uh, and that's spring loaded also. And that looks like this. It's like that. And this is actually part of the workings inside of the lock assembly right there. To then remove the lock cylinder, turn the key to position one, then you jam your Allen key, your hex key into the little push bit. And while that's happening, wiggle, and it will come out. Now don't like remove the key once you do this. Just like kind of take your time and don't throw it out. And don't pull the key. If you pull the key, I'm told the inner tumbling bits could get messed up. Um, so it looks like this when you remove it. And on the inside, it looks like that. And you can see on the bottom left there, there is a, um, a little tumbler-like looking thing. That's actually the bit that we're hoping to check out. The next section shows the before and after and the two broken pieces. It was difficult to record while I was trying to get this done. So if you want to hold tight and stick around, 
I do a long breakdown of an uh, extra assembly, you can see. I swapped in the good piece on the left from a spare assembly I found in the yard. This is the broken bit. You can see it in the top left at 11 o'clock position. This is the spare bit, and you can see it has the top part of the half moon not broken.